من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله الصالحين برحمة الرحيم الرحيم اللهم علمنا ما يفعنا وفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وخال القبدة من لساني يفقى قولي We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this way of life for this Islam had it not been for Allah's guidance you and I will never have been in any position to guide yourself into this. And so therefore, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nourisher, the sustainer, the evolver, the molder, the shaper, the capacitated master of creation. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon the last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household and companions, and all those who follow him until the end of time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, respected guests, those who came and spoke to you, and men and women that have graced their time and come to this beautiful auditorium to listen to the word of Allah. I greet you with the universal kiss of Islam and that is Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala wa Barakatuh. Uh, really, it has been a milestone. Me being in front of you is a mercy from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You being here is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a lot of things that is going on outside right now, but you chose to be here. It is something that Allah has ordained. So if you are here, you count yourself blessed because it is not easy with all these distractions all over the world and you are here. That is the most beautiful thing. And before I get into my talks, uh, I'm bringing you a very big salam from Zaytun Dawa Institute in Seattle, Washington. They are all saying to tell you salamu alaikum and to let you understand that even though they're not here in person, but their heart goes out for you. The topic in front of me is the role of the Muslim Ummah in the 21st century. See, we live in a fast-paced world. We live in the world of technology, the world of information. Knowledge is the key. Whatever you do, get knowledge. A lot of advancement is being made, a breakthrough in technology. What is the role of Muslim in this conglomerate progression? What is it that Islam can give the world to actually propel the world into the next millennium? Really, like I've mentioned, knowledge. Allah, in His wisdom, at the very inception of revelation, He said, Ikra, read, O Muslims. Ikra, read, O Muslims. So the first revelation from Ikra up to Madam Ya Alam, Allah mentioned knowledge twice. And he mentioned pen once to emphasize the importance of learning in Islam. The Messenger Muhammad, وسلم, he said, man Quran wa allama. The best amongst you is he who learned the Quran and teaches it. The best. وسلم, he also said, Knowledge is the lost property of the believer. Go look for it, even if it's with the unbeliever, because you deserve it more than the unbeliever. He also said, the pen of the scholar is better with Allah than the blood of a martyr. Because if a mujahid goes to war, fight for Allah's deen to be implanted on earth, if he dies, he goes to Jannah straight. But the messenger said, no, the pen of the scholar is better with Allah because knowledge transforms human. Knowledge is the key that unravels the mysteries of life. People write books, you read the books many years, it transforms people. So knowledge is the key. Back in time, the Jewish were chosen to be the vehicle of righteousness, but they fail, and they fail so miserably. And Allah in his wisdom, he chose the Nasara, gave them a book. They deviated entirely from the path. Today, Allah said, 
to who reject the nas. You, the Muslims, are the best of nation evolved for mankind. Hairu Ummah. But how could you be the best of the nation unless you do two things? Otherwise, you could not be the Hairu Ummah. Ta'amuruna bil ma'aruf watan hawna adil munka. If you do this, then you are the best of nation. Allah is not going to like you just because you are from some you know, a, a community, or because of your tribe, or because you're rich, or because you're handsome, like I am handsome. Hey, look, it is a known thing, it is not a hidden agenda, everybody knows that. Come on, man, that's a fact, man. This kid. <laughs> and so, that is the role of a Muslim. Today, the world have tried so many ways of life. They've tried communism, it didn't work. In fact, communism is booted away. They've tried sociology or social system, it didn't work. Now they are trying democratic system, which the rich is getting richer, the haves keep having, and those don't have are always dwindling. That's not a good democratic system. So the world is forced by nature to look for the next alternative, and that alternative is Islam. The alternative that the world is looking for is Islam. The whole world is grown in darkness. People are blind, looking for a way out. So Allah has given you and I an injunction, and that is to propagate this deen. If you look back to history of Islam, from 9, 10, 11, 12, up to 16th century, the Muslims were virtually ruling the world. The lingua franca of the world of knowledge at that time was Arabic language. Nations were living in darkness. They called those era the dark ages. When the Quran began to descend, it becomes the light age. Islam is the religion that harness and prepare the you know Europeans into Renaissance. It forces them to become thinkers. They came to the path of Islam. They came to Baghdad, they came to Qom, they came to Syria, Medina to learn. We were there before everybody else by virtue of the knowledge. So what is it that you can do today? Everybody is looking for a way out. And the media and those with vested interests have made it such that they are always hampering on Islam with misinformation, misconception, misrepresentation, misnoma. So I believe if there is any time that Islam must step into the play, that time is now. It is time that we present to the world a pristine, pure teaching of Islam. And that is what the world is looking for. See, I live in the United States over 30 years. When I went to America, in New York City, we have 26 masjid. Today, in New York City alone, not New York State, New York City alone, we have over 2,000 masjids. It's paralyzing. In Chicago, it's more than that. In Philadelphia, it's more than that. Islam is the new thing. Wallahi. It is the new style. If they see, a, this is how I dress in America, because I am confident with my religion. I can defend my religion north, south, east, west, any other house. And if they see you dress with any dress, but you have the kufi on, they see you, Salam alaikum, brother, Lawa Akbar. You Muslim, what's going on? I want to be a Muslim. It's a new thing. It's a hip. The ladies in America, they're not Muslims, but they have their hijab on. Because you ask them, why you dress like a Muslim when you're not a Muslim? She said, because it looks dignifying. Men see me, they don't even bother to look at me. Allah is protecting. I said, so why don't you become a Muslim? He said, well, because I smoke a little weed, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just taking my time. 
They say they smoke a little weed. I say, all right, just take the Shahada and smoke your reefer. We'll talk about the other one later. That is what is going on in the States. Those of you who've been to the States, they know exactly what I'm talking about. The world is waiting for you. Why would Allah choose you? You have a noble job in front of you. Your attitude should be inconsistent or in concert with the dictate of that which Allah has stipulated in Islam. Most of the time you think the messenger Muhammad sallam, spent all of his time doing da'wah. No. His life, his speeches, his actions, his persona is something that the non-Muslims get puzzled with. The Sahaba, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Sayyid Qudr, Abdullah ibn Abbas, you know, Bilal ibn Rabba, you think of them to be some huge, big, big mullahs with some turban on. No. The young men, 15, 18, 19, 20 years, those people in, you know, Buhari, they make mention of them, and you think of, no, they, they were young, but they have the seal to propel Islam into the next millennium. Today, the world needs intellectual Muslims. Gone are the days where they say Islam is all about soul. Islam is all about this and that. Islam is all about intellectualism. And Allah has given us that latitude. When Allah said, Udu o ila sabidi rabbika bil hikma wal mawizatul hasana wa jadilikum billatihi ahsan. Invite them all to the way of Allah with wisdom and beautiful speeches. Not fighting, not causing chaos. Islam is not about that. The messenger was sent as a mercy. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحَمَةً بِالْعَالَمِينَ رَحَمَةً وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَزِيرًا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْسَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ We have not sent you, Muhammad, but as a mercy, someone who will give them good news and glide tidings and warning them also. Then Allah said, most of mankind do not know this religion. We read that in the Quran. They don't know this religion. So Allah is in effect telling you and I, they don't know. Even though Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, yet it is the most misunderstood religion in the world. Why? Because of what we do. Our life, they see a Muslim doing something, they take it that this is Islam. See, they sweep everybody under the same rug. If a Muslim does anything wrong, that's him. Islam didn't teach him to do whatever he did that is wrong. I'm not going to say because I've seen some Yahud or some you know, Christian doing something wrong, the whole Christian dog is wrong. No, that is not smart. That is not intelligent. That is not logic. If he does whatever he does, that is wrong. So they construe Islam. Most of the Muslim brothers and sisters in certain part of the world, they act based upon culture. And those who see Islam through the lens of those people begin to think that this is Islam. That is not Islam. Some of the cultural fiber have crept into the mainstream Islam. It's about time to see it. It's about time to remove those little thing that is causing hindrances to Islam and there is no better time than today I came from the world that the leader of that country that I came from I, don't, I forgot his name I don't know you know his name I, don't know. I forgot but he said Muslims should not be allowed to come here by the way I don't want to get trouble is there any CIA here Hey, look, I, want to, I don't want to go to JFK and I'm going to be in trouble. I'm just going to make sure. Just lift, lift your hand. Let me see. No, we're not going to tell nobody. Let me see the ladies. Cool. All right. So we could talk now. And that's what it is. We was working. I have six prisons that the government of the United States have given me charge to it. I travel all over these prisons and I deliver Islam and I talk to the inmates. And the Jewish, the Christian, the Hindu, the, 
Zoroastrian, then the Buddhist, and the many religions, they have the same day. But we, eventually, they reduce those days to three days. We ask why. They reduce again to two days. So everybody goes to the prison and preaches religion, but we only two days. Well, we ask seriously, what's going on? They said, well, anytime you guys come here, you cause trouble, man. What's the trouble? People are accepting Islam. They make a long line. That is a big problem for them. We have to deliver the message. It is for you and me. It is not for the sheikh or the, you know, the, the, the leaders of the community. This is something that is in the hands of you and I. The messenger said, even if it is one ayah, but like I knew what the ayah, if it is one, that is the beauty of Islam. You don't have to wait to have PhD, QYZs. No. Whatever you know about Islam, give it out. And in doing so, Allah will reinforce you with more facts to present. Because you've become Allah's worker. Allah has a question. Is there any job better than he who invites Islam? This question is called rhetoric question. It doesn't need answer. The answer is in the question. The answer is in the question. And so therefore, it is my job and your job. Your neighbor, who is not a Muslim, what do you say? Oh man, this guy is a kafir man. He's going to hell. He worship this and that. Please. That is not Bilhikima. He's going to get angry. Once you get angry, you block the avenue of da'wah. He will never listen to you, even if you are making sense, because you've insulted him. So Allah warned us, do not insult the other people's religion or their gods. Otherwise, they might, out of ignorance, insult Allah. This is the wisdom. Create an avenue where you and your neighbors will be very close. After all, the intention is to present Islam, but it should be presented in a beautiful mode. But if there is, you know, a huddle, a stumbling block in front of you and the other religion, it's not going to work. That's why we're having problems all over the world today about Islam. In the United States, we have something we call interfaith dialogue. Jew, Christian, whatever religion, they come, they sit, we go and we sit and we take a topic and we dissect the topic. You give your perspective from your religious point of view, we give ours. But at the end, almost all of them will incline to that of Islam because Islam makes sense. Cat Stevens, a British man, you know, Cat Stevens, use of Islam. He said, I'm glad that I found Islam before I found the Muslims. Whatever reason he made those statements, he knows that, but it makes a lot of sense. Why is it that we are having difficulties today in doing or presenting Islam? Because we've already put the stumbling block. And that is so difficult. People are begging for Islam when I went to Jamaica. Literally begging for Islam. So I went on radio. They were asking me to decipher what Islam is all about. And somebody called me and asked me, why, what, is, what can I say to make him you know, accept Islam? I begin to break down. I break it down. I break it down some more. And by the time we're done, the guy called on radio, accepted Islam. It's on YouTube. That is so. They want Islam. Because it makes sense. It is a religion that is consistent with nature. It is a religion that Allah has facilitated to everybody else. Again, I was doing a program. Someone asked me, some radio, he said, Muhammad Awal, you've talked about two hours. I'm going to ask you a few questions here. I said, all right, go ahead. And he said, um, see, we worship Jesus. So he said, I said, they're fine. You guys worship Muhammad. You know how they say that, Muhammad. I say, no, we don't worship Muhammad. He's a messenger of Allah. And he's given a book, and that is the Quran. 
the recitation that you read and take the instruction, put it in your life. That is all about what Islam is all about, what the Quran is all about. It's okay, but I don't believe him. I believe in the other side. I say, fine, you can believe whatever you want. But what's going to happen, my friend, if I show you this same Muhammad in your book, what's going to happen? He said, Muhammad, Muhammad, come on, man. Ain't no Muhammad in my book. I said, well, that's what the Quran said. الَّذِينَ يَتَبِعُونَ الرَّسُولَ النَّبِيَّ الْأُمِّيَا الَّذِي يَجِدُونَهُ مَكْتُوبًا إِنَّهُمْ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they found mentioned in their books, Torah and the Injil. The Quran says his name is mentioned in there. So I opened that, I said, can you read that? You know, I gave him the verse. Solomon 5.16 he scanned through, he didn't see Muhammad. I said, well, the reason why you didn't see Muhammad is that everything was translated from the original Hebrew into English, into Hausa, into Fulani, into different tribes. So therefore, you've missed the bus. But if you get the original books in it, it is succinctly and clearly stated without any ambiguity that the name of the Messenger of Islam is in their books, just like what the Quran have said. So I begin to read to him. In that chapter, it says, his skin is like that of the Lebanese. His skin is like that of the Lebanese. His mouth is good. He is altogether lovely because he is my friend. Oh, daughters of Jerusalem. I said, did you see Muhammad there? He said, no. I said, well, because it's in English. But if you go back to the original text, what did it say? Listen to what it says. It reads in the original script. It says, "Hiko hiko mamidatem fi kulu zahudin Muhammadin wazamrai bayna yakushalam." Allah said, "Allazi yajidu nahu maktuban in the Hukum Torah wal Injil." It is in their books. Why would Allah tell us that it is in their books? Because Allah wants us to look into it, to study it, and to come to conclusion as to the fact that everything about Islam that has been mentioned is in their books. So it is my duty and my job. I've been talking like this for 25 years. And I travel far and wide. Some people smoke weed and they get high. My high is to see someone taking shahada. People take shahada, that's when I get high. I give it high five. I don't mean the high high, what do you think? About? I'm not talking about that one. So you see, people think in America there's no Islam. I'm thinking in a few years to come, New York City, Los Angeles, Atlanta, Paris, and England, surely, eventually, they will become the seed of Islam. I'm thinking like that because intellectuals are saying it. George Bernard Shaw, in 1885, in his book, The Genuine Islam, he said, I predict within the next 200 years, England must accept Islam. Nay, Europe. Napoleon Bonaparte, he wrote a memoir to Queen Isabel. He said, Hail the Queen. Hail the Queen. I am waiting for the time that Islam will take over Europe and I will take over Islam. <laughs> he was speaking from the point of view of politics. They know clearly. Allah has said it. At the end, Allah said, وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا He is Allah who sent his messenger with guidance and the deed of truth to supersede any other religion. And Allah said, even if the unbelievers like it or not, the Muslims like it or not, Allah said at the end, I am the ultimate witness to see to it that my religion will prevail over all religion. And there is every indication that Islam is taking over. According to the Pew Foundation, Helena Rubinstein Foundation, Reader's Digest 2016-2017, they say the fastest growing religion in the world, the fastest growing religion in America today is Islam. It has been so for many years. A man wrote a book by the name Michael H. Hart. 
you read about him were lying. This man, an American, he wrote this book and he called the book The Hundred Most Influential Men in History. That is a deep, deep research. It took him eight years researching men of great repute from Adam alayhi salam and he ended up with ex-American president Ronald Reagan. He's looking for the best hundred that walked the earth. Wallahi, Michael Edgehart, after his uh, research, he came to Madison Square Garden to unveil his book in the early 70s. He said, and I quote what he said, my choice for the number one person to lead the chart of my book will be questioned by many. He said, my choice for the number one person to lead my book will raise eyebrows. He said, but we don't have any recourse. The only single human being that is qualified to be number one on the chart of my hundred is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This man is a Christian, a good Christian. And he said, Muhammad is number one. So Allah said, الذين آتيناهم الكتاب يعرفونه كما يعرفون أبناءهم. Those whom the book was given, O Muhammad, they know you very well, like they know their own children. And they will come to confirm. إن هو إلا ذكر للعالمين ولا تعلمون نبأه بره. This Quran is for the whole of mankind. But as time goes on, they will come to understand the implication of the Quranic truth. So Michael H. had wrote this book. When he finished, wallahi, he was called on national television, prime time. Prime time in America is like 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Everybody's home. So everybody will watch. He was questioned about the book, why he put Muhammad number one. The first questioner, Peter Jennings, he asked him a question. He said, Michael, why would you write a book in America? knowing full well that most Americans are not Christians. Why are you provoking your potential book bias by saying our opposition is number one? Michael, you know, in business we have ethics. And the ethic is the customer is always right. But in your case, you are provoking those who will buy your book by saying Muhammad is number one. Answer the question. Nay Makaranta Abuna Kadawa Makaranta Guna. He cannot be the red. Yep. Kazori one year. Kazori second. By Nagama, Nay Aiki Hadija Jamaari River Basin Authority. ونحن Netapi Kadawa, I built two dams ni Nagina the Hanmuta. Naja Gorin Nataya, Nita Abana Abukana, Nakalun Dam, the Kurus in the Pashi the Hawaii. Chipla Pakwa, Nataga and Abuba got in the Nazana. I will know what in a call soon and guide the Nika and Panidish. Was on Padamukuba. Okay. Now, do a good cigar, I wouldn't did them the Sunana. This is the whole. But when them hangers were around, but it is a tiga move in the book a couple tiga tiga down. That is my job. How saw our quarters? Caracasara, but you want to land in Nina Seda, the Hanuna, and Nadan Karimi Abina. And I tell my wife, what is the Soviet and you want to get in Karimi Kazar Kazar assurance? But that's what I did. So, kada ko zaman ba na ji hausa, na ji hausa. Oray dekas. Ni pula ni ni. Ba ba na pula ni amata ba hausa. So I'm in between. Ma zaman abu na kasan tuwa ya yawa de yawa. Thirty four years. That's a long time. So I'm trying to come back home, man. 
trying to be around. He needs to go back. Yeah, so, man, you guys, you want me to stay here till, till that kid? Man, I'm leaving the stage. It's my time, man. I got to roll. My time is up. So I'm leaving. Haza billahi tawfiq. Assalamu alaikum. Warahmatullahi ta'ala. Over here. Benvin! We got to go, man. Time is up. Takbir! Don't worry, you all have an orbit of Sheikh Awam tomorrow also is gonna be here. Yeah? And he's gonna start with Alsa, so you have to come on time, eh? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. We have to move on, huh? We have to move on. Alhamdulillah, we just have one of our Sheikh. You know, Kanu, you people are very lucky, wallah. You have international airport, you can invite anybody from any part of the world and he arrives directly here in Makia, Mala Aminukan International Airport. Our next speed car just arrived and I would say he has not spent more than an hour here in the can. can